SQLite is enough for most people and you shouldn't use MySQL or PostgreSQL because you frankly don't need it. You shouldn't use any other cloud infrastructure to scale your database in fancy ways because you probably won't need it in most cases. And here I'm gonna go through why and how this is the case, okay? So let's get, let's get to it. So first thing, why would you even want to use SQLite instead of something else? And the reason is very simple. It is simplicity. In today's world, we're getting bombarded with complexity from all different places, right? And we often end up using a lot of libraries and dependencies that we actually don't need. This makes our software harder to run, more annoying to use, etc. So the simplicity is in the core essence. And the thing is, you might be like, okay, maybe it's a toy database, but let's go through why, why would you want to use SQLite? SQLite benefits. SQLite is not a toy database anymore. It is a very highly functionally and very fast performing database that can run very, very fast and faster than you need to for most of the things. I'll, I'll come to the ben benchmark later in the video, but let's, let's go through uh, the reason why you would want to use SQLite over, for example, Postgres or My, uh, MySQL. So the reason is that with SQLite, you just get one file. It's a fully functional database, relational database, and it has all of the features or most of the features that you have in other databases, but it's just a file. And that simplifies a lot of things. So for example, when I want to set up a Postgres database on the server, I have to set up permissions. I have to set up users. I have to do a lot of things to just get it up and running. And when I want to set up a staging environment, it's the same. With SQLite, it's just a file. So you just have a file and that's it. Like it's running on the same user as the app and that's it. There's nothing else and it's very simple, very straightforward. You have multiple databases, you have multiple files. Boom, it's that simple. It's very easy to delete it. It's very easy to copy it. It's very easy to move it around. So for example, when you want to have a staging environment and you're using SQLite, it's usually just copying a SQLite uh, from the production to the staging environment. And now you have a fully functional staging environment. Maybe you need to delete some sense of data, but basically that's it. You don't really need to think about it. It also gives you like wonderful little tickets of uh, things you can do. For example, we are using Metabase on some of our services, but we don't want Metabase to run on the server with our production environment. We just want it to run somewhere else because it's like really annoying and heavy and might like crash the server or something like that. So what we just do is we copy paste the database to another system once in a while and we just run the queries on that one. And this way we can have a, like a cheap machine that we can just do whatever we want with without having really to worry about um, all of all of the problems and making sure the things are running as they should, should be on a production environment. Now, why can you actually use SQLite in production? Well, if you just go through the things here, let me just share my screen and we go here. If we go through uh, performance, uh, oh, like let's go through that standard traffic. So the standard traffic of most websites um, from this HubSpot uh, survey um, uh, analyzes is that 90% of websites or like 88% or something like that are having less than 250,000 visitors every month. And if you if you take the 11%, here it's like less than 10 million. So if you're in the 99% of websites, you're getting less than 10 million visitors. And if you look at the performance of SQLite, there's uh, one here that, that he tried to peak. Uh, he tried to make the best performance using different different kind of um, parameters, and you will need to change a few of the parameters just to make a little bit more performant. But it's very little uh, for SQLite. But you can see here that the slowest one set in 50,000 records in uh, 541 uh, milliseconds. So that means even if you are not really turning on and this is really only relevant for the one that are like the 10 million visitors or if you have a lot of database calls. But basically this means that inserts is not a problem and reads are also not a problem. Like performance wise, reads are extremely fast. And they're not only fast in the, in the sense that, you know, this, the amount of things you can do in a certain um, time is very fast, but it's also latency fast. So when we are having uh, one of our services, for example, Goleco, where we are hosting it with SQLite, 
people think it's like they can't understand it's it's so fast and the reason it's fast is because the latency is low it's not really the performance that they are measuring it's the latency so the latency between our database and our server is practically none like nil because it is just a file that we're reading from so we call a library the library calls the database on the file um, and that's it it pulls that in so with a little bit of tweaking a lot of our apis return within 10 milliseconds which is just not unheard of in today's time so these are reasons why you would want to uh, why you can use uh, sqlite in production even if you have the 99 percent of websites because the performance is fast enough now, how do you use SQLite? Well, you need to do a small performance changes to it because the standard is not super performant, but it's very, very easy. And I'm gonna make a video about that soon. So don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.